Hello again. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for EverymanIT.com and today's class is Open DNS for Network Security. So like we talked about before in the Hacking DNS, DNS or Domain Name Services are an integral part of all networking for computers. So what DNS does is DNS maps what are called fully qualified domain names to IP addresses. So when you go to CNN.com, your computer talks to a DNS server. That DNS server says CNN.com is at IP address 208.55.66.4. Your computer then goes to 208.55.66.4. It does not go to CNN.com. It goes to that IP address. So what makes DNS very powerful is that if you can compromise the DNS servers, you can redirect users to whatever website that you, you want them to go to. So if you can make their computer go to your DNS server, uh, if, you're, if you're trying to hack their computer, if they type in google.com, you can have them go to some sex or some porn site. So instead of going to the IP address for google.com, you would send them to the IP address of, of, of a porn site. Well, what OpenDNS allows you to do is instead of compromising, instead of attacking the computers on the network, what you can do is if somebody types in the domain name, let's say www.sex.com, OpenDNS will redirect them to an IP address of the OpenDNS server, which will present them with a website that says, you're blocked, you cannot go any further. So if, if, uh, if, if people on your network are trying to go to sex.com, analbuttrape.com, you know, anything like that, you can prevent them from going because when their computer tries to get the IP address for the domain name, the IP address that they will get will be an incorrect one. It will send them to the open DNS servers uh, versus, you know, anal butt rape servers. Um, the other thing that's very nice with, with OpenDNS is not only can it help protect your, ser your computers on the network uh, from, from people, like I say, going to, to porn sites or virus sites or any of that, but it also allows you to block your users from going to any number of other websites. If you do not want your employees going to Facebook.com, Yahoo.com, MySpace.com, you can actually go into the OpenDNS control panel and block those websites. So OpenDNS not only secures you from things like viruses and such, but it can also help secure your internal network from you know, all your employees going out to facebook.com. You know, you're paying them 15, 20 bucks an hour. It would be really nice if they did their job <laughs> versus you know, Facebook and all of that. Not only that, but what makes the DNS so powerful as, as, as a security uh, process is this is not simply your web browser blocking certain sites. This is not that Firefox blocks you from going to a website or that you, know, you, you have some filter in Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. This works at the network layer of your operating system. So not only can you not go to the website, you know, sex.com through Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome, but also if you even try to do a ping command, the ping command will return uh, the IP, the different IP address. So you, so you won't be going out. Why this is important is because many of the viruses and many of the malware uh, that infect your computer try to do something called phoning home. What phoning home is, is once your computer is infected with viruses, it then tries to go out and communicate with servers on the internet to pull in more viruses. So, so getting infected with one virus isn't always that bad. The problem is that one virus will then go out to servers on the internet and then keep pulling more and more and more and more and more viruses. So you did something dumb and infected your, your computer with one virus. That virus then automatically infected your computer with 100, 200, 1,000 more viruses. Well, one of the ways that these viruses phone home is they use domain names. So xyz.55x.sex.com instead of IP addresses. Well, if you, you've configured your DNS to not allow that to happen, when they try to go to that weird little domain name to phone home and pull malware onto your computer, 
they'll get redirected uh, to, to the, the, the open DNS servers and it won't happen. So DNS is a fundamental component uh, of all networking. Uh, again, not just web browsing, but you know, email, uh, basic stuff. So again, as I talked about in the hacking class, if you can compromise DNS, you can just make a mess of an entire network. If, if, when you play with DNS, you're not talking about you know, messing with one computer or two computers or the server. You can, you can either take down or protect an entire network using DNS. So this class is going to go over how to use open DNS, why it works, and you know, frankly, this is like one of the, the, the greatest things since sliced bread. So uh, give me a second and we'll go into this. So in order to explain how OpenDNS works, again, we'll just do a little bit of a review of DNS in general to, to explain you know, how OpenDNS works and why it works so well. So as we talked about before, if you're sitting down at your computer right here and you want to go to CNN.com, so you want to go to a website, well remember, computers don't care about things like CNN.com, Yahoo.com, MSN.com. That doesn't mean a darn thing to a computer. The only thing the computer really cares about is IP addresses, 208.55.1, That's what the computer cares about. The computer really doesn't care about CNN.com. So what happens is when you uh, want to go to CNN.com, your computer communicates with something called a DNS server, a domain name services server. In the domain name services server, it will say that CNN.com equals uh, 208.55.66.1. It will then return this IP address to your computer, 208.55.66.1, your computer will then use that IP address to go out onto the internet, find the CNN.com server, and then ask for, for the website from the CNN.com uh, server. So your computer talks to a DNS server, the DNS server returns the IP address, your computer then uses that IP address to go out onto the internet to communicate with the CNN.com server, and then the CNN.com server uh, Puts, gives, you, gives you the website. That, so this is how uh, this works. Now, as we talked about you know, in the Hacking DNS class, generally there are two places where this domain name mapping happens. One is what's called the host's file that sits on the computer itself. So if you have a Windows computer, there's something called the hosts file. You can go in there and you'll see it'll say give you an IP address, a space, and then a domain name. So that's the first place that the computer looks to to map domain names to IP addresses. After that, what will happen is in its IP configuration, it will have a primary and secondary DNS server. So those are IP addresses that state if you cannot find a domain name in the hosts file, then go to this DNS server to try to resolve the, the, the domain name. If you cannot find the domain name in the first DNS server, go to the second DNS server to resolve uh, the domain name. So that's how domain name uh, resolution happens. So normally you go out to the normal public DNS servers and they, they give you sex.com or facebook.com or you know anal anal midgets with gerbils.com. You know, that, that, that's, it will give you the IP address for that. So, what you can do is you can change the DNS server that your computer goes to. So instead of going to the normal public DNS server um, that, that you would normally go to, you can go to the open DNS server, and that open DNS server will look for your computer account or for your network account, and depending on what your net network account is set up for, it will either allow you or not allow you to go to uh, different domains. So if you're allowed to go to a domain, it will give you the proper IP address, and if you're not allowed to go to the domain, it will give you a, a different IP address that will basically not allow you uh, to get to the domain you're trying to go to. So the easiest way to set this up 
so that it protects your entire network is you plug in the open DNS, DNS server uh, numbers into your router. So you have your computer here like we talked about before. Then you have your router uh, that's on the internet and then you have their DNS servers that are sitting off in their server farm. So what you do is in your router you put in their DNS servers, their primary and secondary DNS servers. I don't know them off the top of my head, but let's say 208.55.66.1 and 208.55.66.2. That gets plugged in to your router. It's also important that it gets plugged into what's called your DHP, DHCP server. So what will happen is when your computer asks for, a, uh, for an IP address from the DHCP server, it will be given its, the IP address, 192.168.1.1, it will be given the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0, it will be given the default gateway, 192.168.1, whatever, and then it will be given these domain name uh, servers. So that goes into your computer. So when it's trying to resolve the domain name, it will try to go to these servers. Well, what OpenDNS does is in the control panel, you can go to a little website and uh, open up the control panel on the website. And you plug in what your external IP address is. So the external IP address is your IP address before the internet. So I don't know, 197.55.66.1. Well, what happens is you plug that in, uh, 66.55.1, you plug that in to the open DNS control panel. What happens is when your computer goes to their DNS servers, their DNS servers will read what IP address you came from. It will find the account security that corresponds with the IP address that you came from, and then it will give you DNS accordingly. So if this office here, this person uh, at this office doesn't want any of the employees to get to facebook.com, when they try to go to facebook.com, they will get this, you are not allowed because of open DNS. If there is another office on the internet down here, you know, and they have an IP address of 207.66.55.1, so they're at a different IP address. When they go to the OpenDNS servers, they will be given a different security policy for their domain services, so they may be allowed to go to facebook.com, they may be allowed to go to gambling.com, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a basic overview of how DNS and open DNS works. So basically remember that uh, your computer, uh, or really any networking devices uh, that you're using, they don't really care about the domain names, cnn.com, everymanit.com, elithecomputerguy.com, they don't care about that. that doesn't mean a darn thing to them. What they care about is IP addresses. So when your computer tries to contact a website such as everymanit.com, your computer will ask a DNS server what the IP address of everymanit.com is. The DNS server will return the IP address. Then your computer goes to that IP address, asks for the website, and then you get it. Well, if the DNS server sends back a bad IP address, your computer is still going to go to that bad IP address and, uh, and, and you won't know the difference. So with OpenDNS, what happens is like I say, if you wanna to go to sex.com, your computer asks for the IP address of sex.com, the OpenDNS server doesn't return the IP address of sex.com. The, the OpenDNS server returns an IP address of one of their servers and when you go to it, basically you just get this web page that says you are not allowed to go here. That's pretty simple. What makes OpenDNS really, really nice though, is that what we're gonna show you in a minute is they have a control panel that allows you to say what sites you do or don't want your users to see. So you can make it really, really restrictive where they can't see porn sites or gambling sites or Facebook sites, social networking, you know, really, really restrictive. Or you can make it really, really easy. Like I say, you, you may allow 
I don't know, maybe maybe you're 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 you know you're working at the hustler club, so uh, so you want your employees to be able to go to sex sites, but darn it, you don't want them to go to Facebook. Well, you can allow them to go to sex.com and whatever.com, but not allow them to go to facebook.com. So if they go to sex.com, they'll get the proper IP address. Uh, if they try to go to facebook.com, again, they'll, they'll get open DNS's thing and, and they won't be able to go anywhere. So this is how open DNS works. Like I say, it's just a phenomenal, wonderful thing. We use it uh, here in our router um, because yeah, I mean, it just it just makes life a lot simple. And like I say, it secures the entire network by putting the DNS information into your router or into your DHCP server. Uh, it just it just protects everything one shot. It's it's very nice. So here we are at the Open DNS dashboard. So Open DNS dashboard is basically just you know just another web GUI interface that you'll go to another web control panel. Uh, you go to www.opendns.com and you create an account with them. Uh, and then once you're done creating the account, you'll be able to log in and see a dashboard that looks like this. Uh, Open DNS has a couple of uh, different service types. So they have the free version, uh, the biz, small business version, and then the enterprise version. The free version, I think is, I think is good. Works really well. So we're using the free version. Um, and you know, the business version has a, has a few different options. So, you know, what you get is up to you, but basically you're going to be seeing this, this, the same stuff. Uh, they have a stats tab for the free version. There's nothing here that, that we can really look at. So, so we're not going to worry about that. The main thing that we will worry about is this settings tab here. Now, before I go into the settings, I want to show you uh, what it is that OpenDNS does. So basically, if I open up a new tab here and I wanted to go to a website, let's say sex.com. So sex.com, you know, it's, it's been a busy day. I'm really stressed. So I want to just see some, some sex. Now, since this is a business environment, as a boss, I don't want people to go to sex.com. So when they try to go to sex.com, they will see a page that looks like this. It says open DNS, this domain is blocked. So if they try to go to a sex website, they're gonna see domain is blocked. So if I say analsex.com, yeah, this is blocked again. So here at Eli the Computer Guy, our repair shop, I have blocked all of these sex sites because there's no reason any of my guys need to be seeing porn at the middle of the day. Now again, as we talked about a little bit earlier, you can configure OpenDNS to block any number of different types of sites. So you could have block sex, you could block gambling, you can block social networking. Um, you know, I don't know if you, if you work at uh, you know the Larry Flint, you know the Hustler Club, maybe you want your people to be able to see porn sites, but you don't want them to go onto facebook.com. You know, you know, who knows? Well, basically you are able to go into OpenDNS and say what websites you don't want your visit your users to be able to go to. And what if they try to go to that site, they will see a page uh, that looks like this. So to set this up, we just go back to the OpenDNS settings page. Now I've already uh, set up our office here, so I can't reset it up again. But you'll see it says a label, 855 North Howard Street, and this says our external IP address. So I have configured our router here to use their DNS servers. So when my computer goes to their DNS server, their DNS server will be able to read my external IP address, and then based upon this IP address, they will then present me with it, with the settings that I have configured. If I want to create a, a new network, basically I just tell it a few bits of information here and then do add this network. This network has already been added, so we, we, we can't add it. So if I want to change the configuration, though, I can go here. Yeah. And this shows uh, what configurations, um, what sites I don't want my people to see. So they give you some default stuff. So high protects against all adult video sites, illegal activities, social networking, video sharing, yada, 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 moderate, low, etc. So for me, uh, I have a custom setting here. So uh, I don't want them to go to alcohol sites, hate and discrimination sites, proxy sites, tasteless weapons, porn, nudity dating adult 
themes, adware, drugs, gambling, lingerie, sexuality. So this is just trying to, to keep A, our internal uh, system safe, um, and two, just keep me from, you know, any kind of nasty little lawsuit around the road. Uh, you can see, you can block people though. You can block them from search engines. So if you didn't want them to go to Google, you could block them from going to Google. Social networking. So this would block all social networking, you know, Facebook, MySpace, or Kooked or whatever it is, if anybody actually uses it. Uh, games. So if you don't want your people playing games, you know, when you're paying them $20 an hour. Oh, oh. Ah, yeah. Well, if you've ever had employees, you, you'd understand. But yeah, if you don't want your employees playing games while you're paying them $20 an hour, you can check this and they will no longer be able to uh, play games. The only thing that I will say is be very careful when you're selecting these things because sometimes your employees do need to do things you may not realize that they need to do. Like uh, like some people actually do use Facebook for real marketing and real business. So if you shut them off of Facebook, you may come to find, you know, have problems, you know, e-commerce shopping. You may say, well, I don't want my people going onto Amazon or eBay because they're just wasting time. Well, this may also block, you know, whatever procurement websites that your people need to go to. You know, if your your secretary needs to go to staples.com and you've blocked e-commerce websites, well, then, you know, you may not have paper clips this week. But basically, this is all you do. You, you, you check all of this stuff. You say, um, you know, what, what you want, and then you hit apply. Uh, they've also got different settings over on the left-hand side. So you've got the security settings. Uh, do you want to protect against malware and botnets, phishing protection, suspicious responses, customization, um, you know, what kind of pictures that, that, that people want to see, uh, stats, and advanced settings. But basically all you do is you go in here, uh, you set all this up then what you do is you go to your router so on our network our router is our uh, cable router um, you log in to whatever router it is so whatever router connects you uh, to the outside world and provides the DHCP IP addresses uh, for your network you plug in open DNS's domain name servers into your router and you're good to go. Uh, that's basically all you do. So this is a, a basic demonstration of OpenDNS. Again, this is a web service. So, you know, the pages that I'm showing you today may not be the same an hour from now. You know, they, they can change this uh, at any time they want. And honestly, if you're messing around with DNS, you should understand enough about networking that, um, well, if I haven't shown you how to do something here today, you should be able to figure it out on your own. Remember, DNS is the cornerstone to your networking. If you screw up DNS, you're going to screw up your entire network. So if you don't understand TCP IP, you don't understand networking, this is probably over your head. Hire somebody at 100 bucks an hour to figure this out for you. But this is basically how open DNS works and how you configure everything. So that's a class on OpenDNS for network security. Uh, like I say, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful tool. We, we have it working on our little router here. One of the reasons, like I say, that we set it up for our shop here is we get a lot of computers that come in that are infected with viruses and just have all this nasty stuff on them. Well, one of the problems that we have is when we connect the computer to the internet in order to download load antivirus definitions or Windows updates, etc. Well, as soon as that computer is connected to the internet, the, all the viruses and malware on the computer can try to phone home and pull in new crap and make our lives, well, miserable. Well, the nice part using OpenDNS is we plug it into the internet, our entire DNS is protected, so when those little viruses and malware and all that try to phone home, uh, they're not able to. They pull back a bad IP address and then they fail out. It means it's a lot easier for us to be able to to protect the systems and, and clean the systems up. You know, we don't they're they're not reinstalling viruses as fast as we are uninstalling them. Also, like I say, you know, I 
I, I think I'm talking to a lot of you know consultants and business people out there, but you know for the employees that are out there, I, I don't mean this to be offensive, but the reality is employees waste a lot of time. Employees, you know, salary employees, hourly employees, they get paid to do a job. Unfortunately, for some reason, in the modern world, people think that they should get paid 15, 20, $100 an hour um, for looking at Facebook updates. I don't have anything wrong with people looking at Facebook updates, but I know as an employer, I sure as hell don't want to pay for it. So, you know, in your office, if you're having a problem with people going to Facebook or My, uh, MySpace or AOL or any of this, by using OpenDNS, you can just shut it down. They simply uh, cannot uh, cannot get to it anymore. So, uh, so hopefully they're they're getting back to work. <laughs> but this was a class on OpenDNS. Like I say, it's it's just it's it's just absolutely wonderful. The one thing I will remind you is again. If you do not have a static IP address uh, for your for your network, you know if you have not purchased a static IP address from your ISP, remember to install that little dynamic IP address uh, application from OpenDNS. What that does is when you install it on your computer, every once in a while it will tell. OpenDNS what your current external IP address is so when you go and you use the OpenDNS servers they know what, it, what account you're dealing with. So when you install that little application you know install it on one of the servers, install it on some computer that's going to be on 24 hours a day and will always be on. Don't install it on the secretary's computer that only comes in on Monday. The problem is is because if that computer is turned off you know, your ISP, Verizon, or Comcast changes your dynamic IP address, which they can do at any time. Well, then when you go to the open DNS servers, they won't know who you are, then your, your security policies won't work, um, et cetera. But again, like I say, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, currently, you know, right now, it's uh, April 21st, 2011. Uh, they have three pricing strategies for OpenDNS. They have a free version that, that, that's fine for commercial use. Uh, basically, it allows you to, to use it in like three networks. You can have uh, 25 whitelisted or blacklisted sites, and it gives you a, a bunch of other stuff. We use the free service. The free service just works fine for us. I, I see no reason to, to pay for it. If you want to go up another level, they do have a normal business service. It costs you $5 per user per year. Um, you know, it gives you more options. Again, I'm telling you as a computer professional, as somebody deals with small businesses and security all the time, $5 a year to protect your DNS is cheap. That is like nothing. That's like a penny an hour per employee or less. It's like half a penny per hour, a quarter of a penny per hour. So that is definitely worth it if you need that higher level service. They of course, as with everything, have some insane Uber enterprise level plan that you can purchase. They don't tell you what the cost of that is. That's kind of one of those, you know, if you need to buy that, that means you're willing to spend $10,000 a year for it. You, you can call them on that. But whether you want the, the free version or the business version, free is great. It's great that it's free. But like I say, even if you need the business version, $5 per user per year, uh, that, that, that's a no-brainer. I mean, that's just, that, that's just cheap by, by any means. So as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for EverymanIT.com. Again, this was OpenDNS for Network Security. I look forward to seeing you at the next class.